In today's video we will be covering and building the Duna Mega Explorer Lander and Satellite Deployer. Yeah, I know, it's a mouthful. With this craft will be, to, in today's episode, built and launched to the orbit of Kerbin. Its task is to deploy a communications network around Duna and be able to actually, you know, have a lot of relays so that the two non-atmospheric landers and one atmospheric lander could perform science and hopefully reach Duna and um, Ike, so to say. Right, so with that thing being said, let's take a look at those satellites, shall we, that we will be deploying. We'll also build these satellites, which are the small communication satellites, as you can tell. They have very, very basic and their only purpose is to provide good coverage for Duna and Ike so that they can relay information back to the KSC so we could pilot our remote craft. So, as said, this would be an, an example of such a remote craft. This is a non-atmospheric lander that would be supposed to land on Ike or at least get very close to it and obtain some science. As you can tell, very simple design, but we will be flying it with the re flight computer because, well, we will be far away. So, yeah testing the various systems just to show you guys how the craft will look and then we have the atmospheric lander that lander will hopefully if i succeed be able to land on duna and perform everything using the flight computer yes because duna has a delay of a couple of i think seconds and it's not really easy to pilot the craft you know in real time so that's why we have this lander that would hopefully be landing on the ground. So here we go. Just showing the craft test and then we will get right into the building. To be able to build such a craft, we need actually uh, the communications capability to be able to go pretty far. And I'm actually thinking of researching the, either the unmanned tech or the nuclear propulsion. There we go. So, what we will be covering? We will be covering the unmanned tech, and here we have a lot of phased array antenna experiments, and I need basically this advanced antenna that has a capability of 200 gigameters, so I think I'm gonna go research on that. Now, the point being is that we need an antenna that will have the capability of reaching that far. So, what we're we gonna do? We're first gonna, we're gonna design the small relays. Remember, we have built many relays, but these relays will be going to Duna, so they need to be actually really small. They need to be really tightly packed because I will be attaching them radially, which makes them a little bit more complex and a little bit more demanding than the usual ones. So we put a small Oscar B tank, and then we will be putting a, a few engines. We have, we cannot forget uh, that we have some gimbaling control and. Uh, obviously the relay antennas and everything there all right so there we have uh basically the the antennas we have the so there we have the probe core we have the reaction wheels we have the batteries we have antenna and we have uh, we need to put also the bigger range antenna that will be relaying and that's why I needed to unlock the Communitron 32 because that one actually gives me a bigger range. So there we go. We offset the part a little bit so it's not that much, so it doesn't clip. Uh, then I want to be also making sure that I put this on the other side. Uh, and then we will be attaching a bigger communications antenna and I need something that has actually range of gigameters, so I don't know which one to take. Let's see, we can actually take this one, which will be communicating with the main ship relay. So that one will be pointing to the main ship relay, and this one will be pointing maybe to Ike, I think, or something like that. We're gonna choose, it's good that we have extra satellites so we can have some redundancy, I guess. Fine, that's the relay. So now we have to make it attachable. So what we're gonna do, put the solar panels as well. I think I need like, what, three, four, maybe? Four solar panels? No, four is too much. So let's place this antenna on this side. All 
right? So we will place it somewhere around there. Okay, good. Uh, Auto strut custom activate deactivate toggle right. Okay, so let's put sat duna medium range micro relay mark one. So this is the micro relay satellite, and the whole purpose of that one is to be able to relay information. Now the second one we will be doing the non-atmospheric lander. So pretty much the same core, um, and then we will be hopefully, you know, attaching that one. So everything has to fit in within the fairing. So that's why we need to be going really deep on this. Right. Let's see antenna. We put some landing legs. We're gonna put these small ones. I think they're good enough. We don't need those bigger than that. We, we keep them retracted. Oh, that, that looks pretty dinky. I think it's good. Then we need the photovoltaic panels. I'm gonna go this time with two only for the lander. And then I'm gonna take the communitron 16 in this case, because I don't need that one to go very far. I need this one, communications DTS, to actually handle the brunt of the communications. So yeah. We're gonna place that one there. Okay, uh, I'm actually gonna go with the three-legged or four-legged design with the three uh, engines. I think that actually works better. There we go. We're gonna call it la mi micro airless lander. Yeah. Now we need to put some science experiments on it. So we're gonna do that. Okay. Some batteries, and then we're gonna be placing. I think we have pretty much everything. Yeah, we need just science experiments. So the thermometer, barometer, you know, the standard shebang. Right. Seismometer. Right. So we put that one as lander, airless micro lander mark one. three this time we're gonna be putting the uh, the actual parachute I want to make sure that it deploys quite high because honestly we won't have much control over this vessel so we want it to deploy earlier and slowly descend over Duna hopefully that will be good enough Right, deployment altitude 2000. I think that's good. So it's triple shoot and okay. So then we want to be placing. You have to think backwards. So this is what what is going to land on the Duna, and two solar panels which we can retract and extend. We'll need both. Then we need some fuel tank and that needs to be a little bit bigger. So we're going to put like bigger landing legs. Good. Then we're going to put four engines so we have some thrusts in terms of you know slowing us down if we need to. We have the engines, we have this. Oh, the engines needs to go a little bit higher up. Okay, then we have also the experiments and antennas. So let's see, we have the decoupler. And then below that, I plan to put uh, the heat shield. And below the heat shield, there will be a deorbit stage. I mean, it could deorbit on its own, arguably, sure. But I don't know, I, I prefer to keep that for the landing. Okay, so. This is the basic antenna that will allow us near range communication with the relay craft. And then we'll need probably a bigger antenna to be able to send data to Kerbin. So I'm just trying to find a good enough thing to do. Let's take the robotics here. I'm gonna be placing a small strut and then I'm gonna be placing the Communitron 32. That one is actually very much needed as a relay. And the uh, Omni antennas are really important because without them you just get lost. So then we're gonna be taking uh, the science equipment, thermometer, ravioli, barometer, there you go, beautiful. I'm actually thinking that I might even take the 
magnetometer, but that one feels a little bit too clunky. Okay, so this is the mic microatmospheric lander Mark I. Then, after, then we need a deorbit stage, and for that, that will stage will help us deorbit to get into the Duna's atmosphere and maybe decelerate as much as we can. So, not everything needs to be done by the uh, by the onboard computer. All right. So, microatmospheric lander Mark One. Good. Okay, new route dropped. So now we should be basically constructing the main ship. And since this is gonna be the root part, we might as well continue. So what we're gonna do is from here on, we're just continue the build. So what I need now is I need, I can actually place this. Huh. Nah, doesn't look good. Okay, right. We will need that uh, science uh, experiment somewhere else. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna do some navigation lights, and I think those are important when you're landing. So you get if you're landing during the dark, so you had to get an idea where you're landing. Good. Then let's go with the decoupler. Yeah. And then we're gonna go with this adapter. There we go. Actually, that doesn't look really great. Shall we do it like this? Uh, probably. Okay. So now we need four stack separators. And I'm gonna place them individually because I don't want all of them to fire simultaneously. That's kind of my main shtick. And then we're gonna duplicate this exactly. And then we're gonna be placing the airless lander here, the other airless lander here, and then two relays on the sides. So that's the reason why I've been deploying everything uh, in that configuration. All right, so placed on the other side. So those are basically two airless landers and two air full landers. Now for the relay satellites we're gonna be placing all four. I think actually it makes more sense. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna definitely place those, make sure they're auto strutted to the heaviest part and hopefully everything will be dandy there. So that's kind of the main body of the craft. Good. Then I need some sort of adapter. Do I have any Rocomax? Oh, that looks good. So we're gonna take that one. I just want to be placing, this also has to be a probe core. So that's the reason why I unlocked what I unlocked. So to have this probe core, because the main craft will actually serve as a communications relay going back to Kerbin, because all those small antennas, I'm not sure they can reach Kerbin if the Kerbin is close, but if Kerbin is further, then they can't. So that's something that we need to think about. So now I'm trying to find an antenna that's capable of doing just that. And yeah, we have these big antennas and I have a smaller antenna here. So yeah, I'm gonna place this one. That will be enough. It's 25 gigameters range and I'll probably need a bigger relay, I, I suspect. So, right. Okay, let's place another one. I'm looking for now a bigger fuel tank. Okay, we have gigant storage container. I don't need storage container, I need a fuel tank. Okay, why would I want this? Okay, guess not. I'm just trying to figure out how does this work with the gigant. Okay, so if I go with like the fairing, so we're gonna put everything in a fairing. There we go. That looks good. Perfect. So we're gonna place it like that, and then we're gonna do the following. Let me just check uh, a big reaction wheel. I'm gonna place two. I need really good control authority here. Tank, and then let me see what engines do we have that would be help us decelerate around Duna and orbital maneuvering. Poodles. Yeah, those are not bad. They have good thrust weight, and we have Skipper as well. Shall I play Skipper instead of Poodle? I think... I think actually Poodle would be more efficient, so I'm gonna go with that one. Let's place another decoupler, and then for the transfer stage I might be using the Skipper, so let's see if we, we place it like this. And then we put place the Octopus engine. I actually might need another transfer stage 8323. Yeah, it's enough, but 
I don't know, I'm starting to think maybe we want to transfer stage in the middle. Something like, let's say, we place another Ghidorah tank, yes, and then we put the skipper. Right. That sounds actually a lot better. And then I can place another and I can place this one. So it is a little bit on the hefty side, but I think this will actually help everything and have us much more Delta V than we need to. As you know, I always over engineer my craft and that means we will put up two side boosters. And for those, I'm gonna go with the huge Ghidorah ones. Yeah, okay, there we go. I'm gonna go with a Falcon 9 look, or Falcon Heavy look if I can, because I just think it's an awesome vehicle. There we go, place it a little bit. I'm just trying to get a good alignment with it. Okay, there we go. Beautiful, let's put a top cap above. Not you. Yeah, you, perfect. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna place the fuel lines so they can feed into the main stage, the bottom stage, not the top stage. Yes, because that then there wouldn't be a point because that fuel is not being expended. So, uh, right. There we go. Okay, now that looks like 11,000 meters per second. I mean, it's only for the top stages. So I, until the top stage, we have 9,000, which is more than enough to get to Duna. Let's place in some fins. That looks good. And let's see what do we have for the launch pad. Oh, it's a Falcon. It's a Falcon Heavy launch pad. Look at it go. It's beautiful. Let's place it down and there we go. Making sure that our staging is correct and then we're supposed to test this. Oh, right. I have to, for, uh, I have forgotten to actually add Separatrons. Yeah, Separatrons for this such a large vehicle would always be a good idea because, well, when we dump the boosters, we don't want them slamming them in our core stage because that wouldn't be all that good. So. There we go, move away, everything looks dandy, toggle, decouple, by the way, I always test all of my craft, so just you know, it's not really that I'm just, you know, doing this and then launching and whatever happens, happens, although it would be really a proper Kerbal way how to do it, so I'm just making sure that I'm adding more communications equipment, making sure that I place everything that needs to be there. And then we're gonna do a test, okay? Starting the simulation. Three, two, one, and go! And clearly, one of the issues was that we blew out the launch pad. You don't say. All right, let's see what else we can do. This is actually, I don't always do testing, sometimes I do. Oh, this fairing separation looked hideous. Okay, second note. Let's do a quick test on how much uh, Delta V we have quite a lot, so then we have 7,000 meters per second in in the total crop, then we have 3,000 in this stage. Okay, this will definitely get us to Duna and get us to whatever orbit we want to. The solar panels seem to be working correctly. Let's try out one at least of the small satellites. Okay, you target Duna, and you see Duna is 35 gigameters at the moment, while this antenna range is 25. That tells me that we don't have enough range on the main vessel. We need to actually fix that. Right. Then we have... Then we need to test the satellites. Satellites decouple. And they extend the antenna, solar panels. Oh, do I only have a single engine on them? I mean, it works, but it's a single engine. Um, okay, third thing to note. Then let's try the atmospheric lander. So as you can see, this is just a test. This is a simulation, but, but I do it with every craft too. I don't show it always in my video, but uh, I do it so that basically I know it will whether it will be doing fairly well. I don't test all the scenarios, but I test the main one, so to say. There we go. Okay, time for the fixes. Now, so what we know for a fact that we need to have more engines on the craft or at least the relay satellites. Second thing, what we need to do, let's delete the fairing so that we can it. We will remove this antenna and we're gonna place a bigger one. I'm thinking this antenna needs to be placed somewhere. 
Oh, we could place it like, oh yeah, we can place it like here. So we really need this relay because without it, we won't be able to reach Kerbin all the time. That means that also these small, you know, antennas are completely unnecessary, so we can actually remove them. Right. Also, we need to put double the engines here, which we did on the relay satellites. And another one here. Good. That covers it. And then we need to be able to... Okay, these needs four, four, two. Remove the antennas. Good. Now that's actually resolved the problem. So a seed testing will actually reveal you the potential problems which you need to take care of. Fair enough. No. Okay, let's build a fairing. It does take a while and it takes a bit of fiddling. And this time it's actually a little bit bigger. For whatever reason, I cannot... I don't have the slightest idea why, but it doesn't really matter. And then we're going to be placing that one. Good. Connect them, link them, put the launch pad. Oh, wrong. Put it like here. Okay. And fairing off. Oh, holder off. Good. And actually, ah, we can put the Falcon Heavy configuration so it the launch pad does no longer blow up. Good. That actually makes complete sense to me. I wonder why I didn't see it earlier. Okay, fair enough. So, that being put, I think we are almost ready for the launch. Let's just put in here the action groups. One will be toggling all Communitron 32. Two will be doing regarding, let's just select everything. Usually on my payload, I always put one for the communications, two for the solar panels and three for the long range communications. When it comes to uh, the mothership, the carrying craft, I put 10 to be on the other, so it's exactly the opposite. 10 on the extruding the initial communication, nine for the solar panels and that's it. So that's kind of my plan that I plan to do. Right, there we go, making sure that everything is prepared. Toggle, 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 good. Then let's talk the platform, the launch platform. We need to, we don't have a stage for it, so I think we'll need to put it on an action group. And um, yeah, I think it's done. So let's build this thing and then let us roll it out to the launch pad and launch the damn thing. Between those two, there were a couple of things happening, but then again, I want to see my missions complete, so I figured might as well launch it until we get the transfer window. Once we get the transfer window, then we'll be sending it off to do. Right, look at it go. Opening up. Opening up the erector, start the engines, and let's go. There we go. Gidora Heavy from Tundra Industries taking off and it will be following our nominal ascent so like I said I will only show you bits and pieces of it but now you're gonna see everything and you're gonna see an accelerated pace the bullet shaped body is a little bit more sleek now so yeah the fairing is bigger but still it should give us a plenty of Delta V to be able to do anything that we want go that makes sense Shooting for a little bit for steeper accent curve because there's so much thing that we have inside that we don't want to lose the momentum. Also, I'm keeping my thrust to weight around one point between 1.7 and 1.9 just to make sure that we have it well done. All right, Apoapsis is climbing up to 30s, and there we go. 40. So slowly climbing as we are pitching more downrange and it, we will as always go for a hundred or 105 kilometer orbit. This is a transfer orbit to get us to Duna, so nothing really weird about that. All right, Apoapsis is going to go all the way to 100, getting ready for stage separation, hitting the staging, bye-bye boosters. And our apoapsis, we're going to go for 105 so that we don't collide with the other objects that we have at 100 kilometers orbit. It's always good to separate your objects a little bit physically so you make sure that nothing gets, you know, things don't collide because that's a bad idea. Right. 
Okay, circularization burn, we want today take 105 by 105, that's good enough. Making just tiny adjustments, pointing maneuver prograde, and then we will be ditching the fairing. And extending the solar panels, obviously. And once we're done with that, I think we're gonna just keep it until the transfer window of opportunity shows. I mean, that's the plan, so alright. There we go. Much nicer fairing separation. We fixed the clamshell deploy. Deploying the solar panels and deploying the communitron. Good. Everything looks nominal. Beautiful. So burn in 3, 2, 1 and ignition. We will have plenty of Delta V. If you think about it, we have 9,000 meters per second and we will only we won't even expand the core stage until we get circularized. So we have, we'll have more than enough to get basically ejected to Duna and also circularized because I'm not going to go for the aero break. I don't have the heat shield to do so. So what I'm going to do is going to be powered in orbital insertion. There we go. So 50, 20, 10, good, done, beautiful. All right. So only thing that's left now is to set up the maneuver node and uh, wait for the transfer window. So there we go. We're gonna go. We're gonna take the stock maneuver tool, take to Duna, create, and basically the maneuver node shall be happening in 292 days. Well, that's actually a lot. I'm just gonna make sure that I add it to my Kerbal alarm clock because I like it more than the stock one. And there we go. So guys, if you have liked the episode so far, do fling a like at this, it helps me out a great deal. And for more KSP content, do check out the link in the top right corner, it will be suggested to you by my avatar, saying, okay, you should probably check out this one. And soon enough, KSP2 will be launching, so I will for sure be covering that when it comes. Thank you for watching, this is Gromfork signing off.